Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the four costs of quality. Matter of fact, I'm going to break them down into two subgroups. One is cost of good quality and the other one is cost of poor quality. And the four are prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure cost, and external failure cost. Now, if you follow my channel, you know, once I have a list, it means I'm going to go through each concept in that list and explain it in details and that's what I do but before I proceed I would like to let you know I strongly encourage you to watch this YouTube Steve Jobs talking about the quality the quality of the material comparing the US quality versus Japan and he was a strong believer in quality and he's explaining how US companies try to get quality from marketing versus the Japanese companies where they improve quality by doing so it's very important i suggest you watch that video here's the link but also just do a youtube search and you will find it just type steve jobs on quality so i would we say some costs are good quality and some costs are for poor quality you will see why as we're going through this so prevention and appraisal are considered good quality so what is a prevention cost well Prevention cost is any cost that the company undertake to reduce or eliminate the number of defect, poor quality, non-conformance upfront. So what you want to do, you want to train your employees. You want to set up an operation where you minimize or basically eliminate any poor or defective product, product that don't confirm with your quality upfront. Now, this activity is a voluntary activity by the company. The company chooses to carry those prevention costs. And basically, I'm sure you heard of this saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And this is by Benjamin Franklin. And he, spe he was specifically talking about how to control fires in the city of Philadelphia. So it's better off looking for prevention don't let the fire happen up front rather than trying to put the fire off so better off preventing bad product by spending money up front rather than trying to fix the problems later so what are some examples of prevention costs as far as from an accounting or managerial accounting perspective the first thing is when you design your product have a design prevention take your time in designing your product do your market research Talk to your customers, uh, discuss it with your engineers, design the input, make sure you have a prototype before production. So this way you, you test it to make sure it's working as expected. Vet your suppliers. Your suppliers are going to provide you with raw material. If your, if your raw material is inferior, you're going to have a failure product. Also, assess your supplier's capability and reputation. You want to deal with good suppliers up front. Don't wait until it happens. Vet them, vet them up front. Ask their current customers what do they think about them. Do your own search on the internet. Hire a company that investigate your suppliers. Also, from your own perspective, from a company's perspective, your hiring policy is a form of a prevention cost. Do background checks. Assess your employees, your future employees, expertise, experience, academic credentials, certification, provide them with training and continuous education. Prevent, uh, pre do preventive system maintenance. Check your product. Oil your machines. Make sure they're working as expected. Don't let them go for a long period of time without maintenance. Inspect the material up front because your material, the quality of the material, will determine the quality of your final product. So prevention cost is the best thing to do, is to prevent errors from happening up front but again that's that's the most costly thing appraisal cost is two of four and notice what i have, I have light light green then darker green then i'm going to go into yellow then i'm going to go into red so here appraisal cost is cost or activities incurred to identify defective product before the product are shipped to customers and the reason is to assure that the product meet our specific requirement so making sure our product is good this is before we even think about shipping it to the customer just we're done with it we produce something let's look for issues or problems to see if that if that product is good again those are voluntary activities and some examples of these voluntary activities is product sampling for example for every 100 product we select two to make sure they meet they meet our our specification any quality control testing you're testing the quality of your product is a form of appraisal cost you wanted to make sure it's working properly testing and inspecting income and material you receive the material now what you do you inspect it you test it basically part of sampling why because the material it's going to go into your final product once the product is done test the product 
Test the product. Depreciation of testing equipment. Look at your equipment. See if they're depreciating. See what you can do. Calibrate your equipment on a regular basis. Also, from an accounting perspective, you can think of the bank reconciliation as an appraisal cost, making sure your cash and your journal entry match. This is a form of an appraisal cost. Anything in accounting that deals with reconciliation is similar to what's called an appraisal cost. Before we proceed any further and discuss the other two quality costs, costs, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or just a student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. My motto is saving, helping accounting students one at a time by providing you with resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false, additional exercises. This is a partial list of my accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your backer, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam, and as well as Miles. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, help, it will, it will help me tremendously, share it, Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Now let's take a look at the cost of that quality. The first one is in, the first one, which is the third one in total, the internal failure cost. What is that cost? That's a cost incurred. That's a cost incurred as a result of identifying the fact before they are shipped. Here, think about it. What's the difference between internal failure cost and appraisal cost? Because they are both before the product is shipped. Here, the, pro the, the person purchased the product, but before you deliver the final product, you inspect it. This is the in internal failure cost and you find something. The appraisal cost, the customer did not buy it yet. In both situations, the customer is not aware of the issue. Again, this is an involuntary activity. You want to inspect, you want to look at your product before you send it to the customer. So example will be scrap, scrap product, basically bad product. You produce it, it's not good. You figure out it's not good before you ship it. Spoilage. Well, it was good, but right before shipment, it went bad. Again, you, get, you need to get rid of it. Rework. Let's assume you're painting a car. Then you did not do a good job or you painted it the wrong color. You will do the rework. That's what rework is. You inspected the product during the appraisal process. Now you re-inspect it again during the inter internal failure cost. That's also additional cost. Let's assume you want to expedite or rush an order because you are behind schedule. Well, you might have to pay your employees over time, or you might have to pay a premium for material needed because you need a rush order, or you may have to rush the order itself to ship the product to the customer and pay a premium. All of those are considered expediting or rushing cost, which is part of inter internal failure cost. The fourth cost and the most devastating cost for the company is external failure cost. And notice it's in red. And these days, external failure costs are the worst because customers, they can go online, on Facebook, on Twitter, on different social media, and they can complain. So the external failure cost is pretty bad for some companies. So it's the cost incurred as a result of the factive product being shipped to customers. Here, you ship the product. And guess what? They find out it's not good. Like I'll tell you something about external failure cost, how I use it. Like when my wife and I travel, when we go to a hotel, the first thing we do, let's assume we need to stay at a hotel. I We look up the comments what, what, when people stayed at that hotel. And this is, you know, and, and customers, if the customers complain, that's an external failure cost. We want to take a look at it. There's too many complaints and the manager is not responding of that hotel. Well, we avoid those hotels. Like sometimes we do, we do find external failure cost, but the manager try to fix it. They promise, you know, to, to have a better quality. Then we might change our mind. So external failure cost is really the most expensive for companies because you lose your reputation, you lose your goodwill, and there's nothing you can do about. Here you have an unhappy, angry customer asking for something, asking for remediation. And the worst thing is the when they do a review or when they leave you as a customer, lost future sales is very expensive. This cost is involuntary. The, the companies don't want to go through this external failure cost. But how do you reduce your external failure cost? You have good prevention costs, you have good appraisal costs, you have internal failure costs. You don't want to get to the external failure cost. What are some examples of external failure costs? When the person return the product, return or you have to rework, return or you have to rework the job. 
cost of field servicing and handling complaint. You have to take care of the customer, address their concern. That's a cost. Warranty repairs, that's also a cost. And the most expensive cost that usually not on record and company can only estimate is lost sales. You don't know how much future sales you would lose because external failure cost, and that's not even on record. What should you do now? You should go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, and look at additional resources to solidify this concept of the four quality cost. Good luck, study hard, invest in your career. Go ahead and subscribe. It will help you tremendously in your accounting education, in your professional certification, CPA, CMA, and stay safe.